This is going to be a basic tutorial on how you can create your terrain for your game engine using PNP Terrain Creator. Uh, we're going to basically just create a random terrain to throw into our engine and then later you can go back to the program and edit it a little bit to uh, fit your needs. What you first want to do is download the PNP Terrain Creator software. You can get the free version. Uh, it has some limitations, uh, but certainly it would do the trick for what we have to do now. Once you have it installed, you can go to the program and open it up. It'll take a few seconds here to load up. And you'll see some options here that we can select. For this application, of course, we want to create a new terrain. But you may want to go and view the, the help files at a later time. You can go to Open First Steps, and it will actually guide you through some of the basic uh, settings, um, how to do this, how to do that, and answer some of the questions that I might have not covered. I'm trying to make this a basic quick tutorial so you can get started. Uh, so we'll create a new terrain. We need to name our terrain. So we're just going to do Test Terrain. And here's some information on, like, say, the overall size of your terrain, how many sectors you have on your terrain, uh, the sector definition size, and the detail element size. The three main things we're concerned about right now is the minimum height and the maximum height. Minimum height's going to be zero. You can't go any, any uh, but, well, you can't really go below zero here. Uh, and the max height we want to set to 100 so we don't go over that limit. 100 represents anything that's going to be really white on our height map. Zero is going to represent anything that's completely black on our height map. Something that's gray might be, say, at a level 50. So if we were to create our initial height at 50, you'll see when we start out it's going to be a color between black and white. So press OK, and you'll see, yes, that's a color between black and white. What we want to do here... is let's prepare our terrain to be randomly generated. So what we need to do is go to File, Terrain Properties, and go to Generator Settings. Activate the Apply Parameters so you can put the parameters in. Minimum height is going to be 0. Maximum height is going to be 100. Random value, we're going to set, uh, let's just say, to 25. And roughness is going to be 50%. Um, I gave some different parameters on my website. Uh, that would give you more of a flatter terrain. This is going to give you a little bit more of a bumpier terrain. So let's press OK. And we'll press OK again. And let's create this random terrain. So let's go to File, Automated Terrain Generation, Activate to Create Height Map, and Generate Terrain. You'll see now that we've uh, created some random terrain. Certainly when you go to Automated Terrain Generation, you can click on Create Sector Detail, which will take a little bit longer here. and you'll see that we have a different setting here. Make sure you have a good processor if you do happen to select the Create Sector Detail. Uh, this option gives you like a better terrain when you have more sectors. Uh, the free version that we're working with now uh, will give you a 3x3. Three three. Uh, I purchased the standard edition from PNP Terrain Creator. It allowed me up to 6x6. Six six. Uh, basically, it allows you just to have a bigger terrain that um, kind of fits all together later in your engine. So right now, let's just do uh, Create Height Map, and I like this. Okay, so we'll keep it. And what we can do is go to File, Save. Uh, another way you can randomize your terrain is if you right-click on that little block, you can go to Automated Sector Generation. You can set it here as well. Uh, word of caution is if you do each sector individually, if you have more sectors, they will actually not line up with each other when you try to put them all together. Uh, so this will do for now. Let's right click on it and go to edit. You'll see right now we're still in the 2D format or the 2D window. You'll also see that we can actually move around and see it in detail. Uh, to go to the 3D version, let's click on the 3D button and you'll actually now see our terrain. It's all random. We can actually adjust a little bit uh, the scroll mouse, or the scroll wheel, if you scroll up, you go up, if you scroll down, you go down. Your arrow keys on your keyboard will move you around. If you hold in shift and move around, it will speed that up a bit. If you hold in your middle mouse button and rotate, you can certainly rotate around your terrain to view a 360. Uh, we'll get a 360 view. Uh, so now that we're at this point, 
let's uh, kind of do some basic editing with this. What we can do is we can click on this button up here to edit the terrain. You will have an average button. You know, you can see what it does here. It kind of just blends everything all together. You can also make that larger. Other options might include flattening or giving it some type of like noise in the terrain. The median actually kind of um, blends it in a bit more. And you can raise or right click and you can lower the terrain. Or left click, raise, right click, lower. Several different options here. You can uh, change the size um, and do a few different things here. Uh, when you're done with this, you can go back and actually play around with some of these buttons. The biggest concern is just the terrain height right now. Uh, I didn't go over this on my website, but actually you can add a basic water level to kind of give you an idea of where that's going to be. If you click on the water button or the rain droplet, what you can do is assign a water definition. Right now we have no water. If you click on the settings, click on new, new water definition will work, but we can name it water one. Give it a color. You can set texture. We're going to give it a default texture. You can use alpha with this too. Texture size, you can change this around to adjust it, uh, but for now this will work. Press OK. Let's select our water definition. Show water is already activated. And what we can do is we can set the initial height. If you right click anywhere on your map, let's say down here, right click, go to set ground water level. And now you will see that we've actually set water in our level. This gives you an idea of what your engine or your level will look like in your engine if you have a certain water level. If you right click up here, set ground level, you see that the water actually came up a bit. So this could represent, say, like a coastline or something. Uh, so now that we have this taken care of, um, you know, we don't have to show the water. We can go back and turn this option off if we want. Uh, just keep in mind that the water is not going to export with your terrain. We're just worried about, worried about exporting your height map or your HMP file for 3 Game Studio. Uh, since I have a little bit of experience in 3D Game Studio and Realm Crafter, Realm Crafter will be able to import bitmap files as height maps, and 3D Game Studio will be able to do uh, bitmaps, uh, PCX files, and PGA files, uh, along with uh, um, importing a HMP file for terrain. So now that we have our terrain and we're satisfied with it, we want to go to File, Save. We can't go back to the 2D button or the original window where we had just our little terrain icon down here. So what we can do is we can go, make sure we save it, go to File, Close, go to Open a Terrain Project, and it should come up with Test Terrain or Your Terrain. Now we can go here on this little icon and uh, actually export this. We can go to File, Export, and now we can select some of the options. We don't have to worry about scene exporters, mesh or exporters, sound exporters, vegetation, object. That is all done through our game engine to put in the vegetation, the objects, the sound, the mesh, uh, and the scene objects. So what we're worried about right now is the height and the texture exporters. If you put some texture to your terrain using this icon here when you're in the 3D view, um, you know you can actually add the, some of the basic textures to your terrain. Uh, you're going to have to download the terrain file or the ter excuse me terrain texture files uh, from the creators of PNP Terrain Creator on their website uh, to use them, where you can kind of make your own up. For now, we'll worry about just the height map. Uh, right now, you can see we can, we can export as a bitmap and a raw file along with the new support for 3D Game Studios height map. For now, what we're going to do is just export to 3D Game Studios height map file. We'll press OK. The patch size, uh, if you noticed before that we set our original map to the size of 1024, if we select this and press OK, we're going to have one file exported. If we click on 512, imagine 1024 broken up into four sectors, which is the 512 size, we're going to have four terrain file sizes, or the four terrain files if we press OK. And 256 would give us 16 terrain files. 
any smaller, you're just going to go up to 64, and it's just going to you're going to have too many terrain files. For now, we're going to export as 1024. Everything looks good here. Press OK. We'll save it to the desktop as test terrain. Save it. it. Should take a few seconds to export. And there we go. You know, you can save it. You can come back later and edit it. But for now, we have our test terrain height map. If you're using 3D Game Studio, uh, you're going to want to keep on watching. If not, this is the end of using the PNP Terrain Creator tutorial. Um, hopefully, you learned something. Uh, you're better off just kind of going back into the program and playing around with it until you get better. Uh, everybody that's doing a 3D game studio terrain, what you can do with this file here.